let's cover the key inputs that can be used to charge Goal Zero Yeti first. So the first input that this unit comes with is the built-in adapter and that eight millimeter connector right here. This eight millimeter connector is the default charging method for Yeti Goal Zero. Second to that is the front eight millimeter connector, which is exactly as that one, except that it is here at the front. The third one is the Anderson connector front power pulley charging port. The fourth one is the entire modular that I have added here. I will link it on the top for the review and how to add this, which basically it is the Yeti link. This was built by Goal Zero to allow this unit to be charged through the car alternator directly or to add additional Yeti tanks to expand the capacity of this unit. This modular comes with a front eight millimeter connector and also in the back, there's a connector that connects here through a cable. I'll show you that down the video in a little bit. So now we covered the different inputs that can be used to charge the Yeti Goal Zero. Now let's cover the different charging options I have been using during any sort of DIY projects or through uh, camping trips. Now, please recognize these are my options and I will walk you through some of the uh, benefits I got from some of them and some drawbacks to some others so that you are aware as you explore your options. So the first option, as I mentioned, is through uh, using the included AC wall charger. And then the Gold Zero Yeti will be fully charged within 18 hours. Yes, this option is pretty slow. So, so depending on how urgently you need your Yeti to be fully charged, uh, this may or may not be an option for you. Now the benefit for this is that to keep your Yeti topped up all the time, perhaps it may be a good option to use this to plug it up to the wall and keep it there. I have used this option to sometimes charge my Yeti Goal Zero uh, using the car built-in inverter. And uh, that allowed me to uh, charge this Yeti uh, by about maybe 56 or 55 or 57 watts um, through the built-in inverter, the uh, 100 watt inverter. So that's the other benefit that for this one, you could use it with 100 watt inverter that are built into some of the cars. I also use the eight millimeter port here uh, with uh, my um, uh, solar panel uh, that I have, which is the uh, Nomad 100 uh, solar panel. Uh, that solar panel allows the ZED to be charged within 16 to 32 hours. So uh, this time frame that I gave will be different based on obviously the amount of sun you're getting, the direction, the heat, also how empty or how full your uh, Goal Zero Yeti is. So that Nomad 100 watt solar panel uses the eight millimeter connector at the front here. Additionally, within the Anderson connector here at the front, I also able to use the newly released Nomad 200 solar panel. This one charges Yeti 1000 
from 8 to 16 hours. Again, this is dependent on the amount of sun, the heat, the direction, also how empty or full your Yeti Goal Zero is. So I found that I'm able to connect the 100 watt solar panel with the 200 watt solar panel here at the front and able to run both of them together, which that charges the, that allows me to charge the Yeti Goal Zero uh, in, in a decent amount of, of time because using both of them makes it a lot faster, obviously. As you can see, the Nomad 100 is attached to eight millimeter and the Nomad 200 is attached to uh, the Anderson connector. They are not exactly positioned in the right way. So you're seeing low wattage here. I get a lot more than this, uh, but I just wanted to demonstrate that uh, you could do both of them here together. So you can see here, if I unplug the 100, now it's only the 70 watt coming from the 200 watt solar panel. And then you can see as soon as I plug it in, it consumes that one. And also if I take the Anderson connector, so you could plug both of them together. In addition to those two, you could also plug this as well. So you could basically add more power input sources uh, and that makes the Yeti uh, very flexible to add additional power sources. So the Yeti Link can charge uh, the Yeti 1000 uh, pretty fast actually. Um, I've seen, um, you know, the, the number of uh, max input going from 300 all the way to 500 plus watt uh, as uh, when the car is running. So the front eight millimeter port within the Yeti link can take 14 to 22 volt. And uh, Yeti does not recommend you exceed 150 watt per port. I uh, connected this Yeti extension cable to my car, directly to my car battery, which is connected directly, obviously, to the alternator. And this gets connected to the back of the Yeti link right there. And then when you collect, connect this, obviously the car is running, this battery start charging. As you can see here, the car is running now. And this indicates that the Yeti uh, link expansion module is taking full power from the car alternator. And you see here, it's pushing 328 watts. Like I said, you could add multiple input sources to charge your Yeti Go Zero. So as I am having this plugged in to the alternator directly to the car, I could utilize the built-in charger here to add an additional source of charge to my Yeti Go Zero. So now I connected this to the built-in adapter. I could use my car inverter to charge as well. You can see here with the additional add-on of the built-in uh, adapter, the charge went all the way to 400 uh, watts. You could see it here, if I unplug it, it will go to 326, and if I plug it, it will go 392, 401, 402, so until it stabilizes. 
and you can see here this input is lit up as well as this one the other method to charge the Yeti Gold Zero is the Yeti Fast Charge 25 Amp power supply. This is optional and I don't believe this any longer available uh, from Yeti Gold Zero for purchase. They discontinued this item because I believe it's not compatible with the X series of uh, Gold Zero Yeti anymore. So this um, Yeti fast charger, 25 amp power supply, it charges your Yeti 1000 five times faster. So the charging time supposedly is documented around uh, four hours. And the way it works is that it actually you connect it to the Anderson connector here. You connect your power source here to the back the built-in inverter you have to be mindful when you connect the car inverter uh, 100 watt will not run this charger um, i have a 400 watt inverter here uh, in the forerunner and using this inverter i am able uh, to run it Turn it on, blue light comes on. You can see here, it begin to charge. Three hundred watts. And again, you could still plug in this one as well with it to get to uh, a faster charge. So if I want to connect the Yeti link with it, in addition to the 25 amp fast charge, you can see here it came on and look at the charging here. Now we are at 579. So you could see the difference here. If I unplug it, it will go, go down and then potentially also may go up a little bit as well. Personally, for me, as I use the Yeti for camping, I found that solar, both of those I use a lot, plus this one. Uh, having the ability to charge directly from uh, the alternator is a huge add value to me. Uh, and that has been extremely helpful to keep the Yeti 1000 uh, constantly charged as I use the uh, camping fridge and uh, other appliances or uh, electrical needs uh, with, uh, with the Yeti 1000. Before I connected this one I used to use the 25 amp power supply the fast charger uh, with the built-in inverter in my car but uh, that was never consistent but also it required that I let the car run as I was doing that uh, but this one because this charges while I'm driving most of the time if I am in the car for about 45 minutes or an hour I'm getting enough charge for a while. So this is a huge value for me, plus obviously the two solar panels. The built-in adapter that comes with Yeti, it charges extremely slow, as I said. I think the only value I see from this one is to keep the Yeti 1000 topped up all the time because it takes 18 hours to fully charge it. So it cannot be used as a source to sustain um, uh, charging while uh, utilizing the AD at the same time. Which one I will buy again? I think the solar are key 
This one is a key. I could live without the built-in adapter. I could also live, now I have this one, I could also live without the uh, 25 amp fast charge power supply. But Yeti, Yeti is not making that anyways anymore. Uh, perhaps you may find it in the used market. Hope this was helpful. Please uh, subscribe and smash the like button to help the channel. Uh, let me know what else you want to know about the Gold Zero Yeti. Happy to do other reviews and I've been using this unit for two years. So pretty familiar uh, with uh, all the shortcomings and pros that this unit has. So let me know down below uh, what else, what kind of other reviews you would like to see. Thanks for watching.